Welcome back to Strategic Command, the American Civil War. First of all, I want to thank everybody for giving me their advice in the comments down below. It's been fantastic, man. Your tactics are absolutely making sense. So far, we've got a few people recommending that we go for New Mexico. I believe that's going to be happening next turn when we actually get some forces over there. We also have to look towards our native allies that are slowly but surely joining us. And I'm actually going to assist them in getting rid of all these federal forts in Indian territory. So, um, yeah, that's going to be fun. I thought I would also take this time to go ahead and mention that for $3 a month, um, and I think in some cases 5 or 10 depending on your membership, you can go ahead and become a member today of our channel. And it would really help. So far, we've got seven members I can promise you this, um, that if we got more members, these sort of series would come out with episodes much sooner, uh, and I would probably <clears throat> be much more willing to finish them. The fact is, when we get three, 400 views on a video, I'd love to, you know, do it just for you guys, but it ends up actually hurting the channel. It really does. Um, YouTube penalizes us for not getting that 1,000 view mark or not getting that 800 view mark in future videos. That being said, a lot has to be discussed here about our campaign. There is so much that I've planned. Now, one thing for sure, we're getting troops into the Shenandoah Valley area, and I'm actually going to go here, um, or not go into the zone of control. I'm going to let them go for the zone of control because they're going to try to take that rail depot or that mine, excuse me. So I'm just going to prepare for a defense, essentially. Now, we've been talking a lot about Kentucky, and I gotta say, guys, everybody's talking about, like, hey, let's wait a little bit, try to get them over here with diplomacy. I have thrown a bunch of diplomatic points, and in, in fact, I'm gonna throw some more diplomatic points into the Confederacy, um, into Kentucky here, that's going to greatly increase their chances of coming to our side. But if the Union keeps pushing them towards their side, it's gonna be really hard for me not to declare a war. So you guys are gonna have to talk me out of it. As for the naval side of things, these blockade runners have survived a lot longer than I expected, and I'm bringing them all the way down the coast here, getting closer and closer to New Orleans. That's where I'm trying to get, to try and strike at this um, group of Union ships outside of Fort Pickens. I think it's going to be pretty damn important. Now, let me just take a quick look over here. Now that's General Price, okay, looking good, looking good. And as, as you can see here, I mean, we've got a damn invasion force in Kentucky. We're ready to go, man. Our guys are rearing, rearing to go. Uh, we've already done our attacks here. I'm not going to mess with that. Uh, but I am going to go ahead and end the turn. Let's do it. Okay, our capture of the Norfolk Navy Yard, still fully provisioned, gives us access to another major, major naval construction yard. Now, they burned the old friggin' Merrimack, but we can actually start building our first ironclad. I'm absolutely going to say yes. It is 100 points, but the reason I think that's worth it is even though we're probably not going to beat the Union at sea, we've got to try. We absolutely have to try. Otherwise, they're going to walk all over us. And there we go, guys. Uh, so we just signed a treaty of friendship and alliance with the Chickasaw Nation. Um, and defenses raised to protect Southern Virginia. Look at that. We've got some guys actually rising up here. Um, and it looks like John Baylor has begun our invasion of New Mexico territory. There's actually a lot of really good resources here, including Chino Mine, which I believe is a copper mine and a gold mine, um, or a mix, you know, several different mine networks in any case. We've got to try to get that thing back. It's going to be extremely important um, and could turn the war. It's certainly going to provide us with a bunch of resources we don't currently have. Really nice defending there in the Shenandoah Valley so far. Our men under Johnston, I believe, are holding the enemy off just barely here. But let's hope that Price and his men can hold in southern Missouri. It's looking pretty rough here. them off hold them off they could actually probably take springfield this turn and cut us off i think we got to fall back to the state line and hold off yeah that was, i was worried about that we've got to fall back to the state line with price for sure all right hey the enemy left fort washita it's gonna be an easy grab but they ran to the capital of tishamongo this is the chickasaw capital 
So that, of course, is going to affect our relationship with them. And over here, west of the Mississippi, we don't really have any armies. We just have, like, well, small brigades. Um, I'm not really sure, but I'm thinking we need to send a few units there just to push the Union back a, a bit. So Chickasaw has surrendered. They're a very small tribe. It's only three um, points for the enemy, but still, it's going to be a pain. And there we go. The Seminoles have joined us. We've got to protect the Seminoles. So I'm immediately going to get in between the Federals there at Tishomongo and Wewoka, the capital of the Seminole Nation. It also looks like Brazil recognized us as a country, so... Muito obrigado, Brasil. I will say that. That's pretty cool. All right. Our first unit of cavalry has just arrived in El Paso, ready to march into New Mexico. And what did I tell you guys? The campaign here is strongly encouraged, as the gold and copper mines of the Southwest can provide us with valuable resources for the war. In coming months, you'll be offered the opportunity to send reinforcements to El Paso, and further units may be sent from the Loop near San Antonio. So we can essentially... Um, yeah, we can move here from Texas, and right here it's asking us whether we want to order um, Commander or Commander Sibley and John Baylor to begin the invasion of New Mexico, and the answer is a definite yes. The other option is to keep your units in Texas, um, and the benefit there is that, you know, of course, you can send them to the front line um, from Texas, have some additional um, units. Uh, some additional forces, etc. But we're not going to do that. And what we're going to do here with John Baylor is we are immediately going to start taking these areas. You can see all of that is now under Confederate control. However, Chino Mine is really what we want to go for. And another thing I want to do, I don't want the enemy taking out the Seminole Nation as quickly as they took out the Chickasaw. So let's get over there, and we're just going to get in between. And we will take back to Shimongo. I'm going to move up to Fort Washita. That, of course, is now under Confederate control. I thought we would loot some points for that, but evidently not. And I am going to fall back here with Price. Again, it's just not safe here. We could grab Joplin, Missouri. What the hell? They were waiting for us even at Joplin. At least our guys put up a pretty good fight. But, um, yeah, it definitely shows us that they are doing everything they can to encircle us. So we're going to leave Carthage back there. We'll even start falling back over here across that little river. And this is what I'm worried about. For those of you that are at this point of the video and familiar with the game, what should we do here? See, we've got an enemy, like, right there. We could actually send this unit back. I had planned to, of course, send him over here to help Price. Um, but I think we're going to send him back to push the enemy. And you know what? Maybe we'll take this cavalry unit. Now, this is the border with Kentucky. By the way, let's take a look at that. Do you see what I'm talking about? They are now more in favor of the Union than the Confederacy. Like, I really think the best thing to do here is to launch an invasion of Kentucky. Now, the other issue I have over here is where do we send this unit? Uh, of course, we know that the Federals are pushing in this area of Beckley. So I think that's where I'm going to head. I'm going to head up towards that Beckley area. Same with our units here at Christiansburg. I was initially just going to send them up to Johnston, but now that I look at the map, we should send them here to push the enemy back in West Virginia, uh, kind of get them back from Beckley, etc. And in fact, we're going to continue our attacks here in the Shenandoah Valley. So let's see if we can keep hitting the enemy for everything they're worth. Oh boy, yeah, they are definitely extending those forces. Pretty nice. It would be nice to have some more forces here. And in fact, I'm going to start pushing up with this brigade. Yeah, we might as well have Johnston pretty close at this point. Um, and I'm also going to take our cavalry. And the cavalry is going to assist this force as well. Although, you know what? Now that I'm looking at the federal forces here, I'm thinking it might not be a bad idea to try and cut them off. But as you can see, in just about every single one of these cases, the enemy is going to come out on top. So I'm just simply going to reinforce. And my concern is they have, they may have already researched certain things. By the way, for anybody that's made it this far, um, and we're actually just to push membership, we're going to make this exclusive to channel members or people that have been with the channel longer than, let's say, two years. Um, and that is, we'll let you name your own brigade. So just name where you want your brigade, name what you want it named, 
and we'll rename one of these brigades over here. Now, this guy we could, of course, bring back down over here to defend against Fort Monroe, but I really don't see the enemy pushing through there. I don't think it's going to happen. So instead, we're actually going to push this guy up to the front line and prepare to do battle with any of the units that we can reinforce we will certainly bring in some rebel reinforcements just to make sure that everybody on the front line here is fresh and thankfully there are plenty of confederates uh ready and able to assist us here against the union Again, I still think the invasion of Kentucky is going to be almost essential. Um, I just don't really see any other way around that. Now, this is the area where we can actually go to um, El Paso, Texas, and eventually get to New Mexico. But that would mean leaving the port of Galveston completely open. And I'm not entirely ready to take a risk like that. Now, one thing I know for sure about Polk's invasion of Kentucky is he actually came in on the Cumberland Gap. Um, and that is this area right here over by Tazewell. So what I'm thinking we might do is kind of sort of split this army just a bit here. I'm definitely going to bring some reinforcements over here um, and have basically an army right there and an army over here. The problem is the farther we get away from our general... Uh, we make it a lot more difficult on our troops. So what I might do is just put them near Albany instead of the Cumberland Gap and attack that way going north. But you know what? I'll hold off one more turn. So I really need those comments. Let me know what you guys think I should do. But I will hold off a single turn. And I'm going to continue moving south with my ships here. Again, we are trying to head to our finest port, and that is the port of New Orleans. People always think about Savannah, Georgia, or they think about um, North Carolina or even Virginia uh, when they're thinking about like where the main source of Confederate trade came from. But guess what? It didn't. It came from New Orleans. It came from Louisiana. So we want to make sure to really watch that area and uh, take good care of it, if at all possible. Now, we do have points to spend, and I don't know. I don't, I'm not going to waste any more on Kentucky. What I will do, though, um, we definitely need to do some research, and I'm also going to go ahead and throw some diplomacy towards the UK. Oh, looks like we're going to have to wait a bit. What about the research? Let's go over here. We're already doing infantry equipment, but I think we can actually speed it along, and I'm going to try. So we're going to try and speed along infantry equipment there a bit, and I am going to purchase... We do need a mountain division... And some more cavalry divisions. But let's get a mountain division for now. It's going to be led by Garnett. And I think that'll be sufficient. Let's end the turn. A convention is held in Frankfurt to gather support from for secession. So actually, maybe Kentucky. Look at that, guys. Pro-Confederate Kentuckians organized the Orphan Brigade. I'm happy we did not declare war this turn. It also looks like over here in New Mexico, we're going to be getting volunteers. Absolutely perfect. And we won the first battle at Mesilla. The invasion of New Mexico has begun. Now, the ironclad board has been created. And what that means is the Union are going to begin producing ironclad ships. I don't think there's any way we can possibly beat the Union in terms of production. It would be close to impossible. But again, we are going to keep trying to best them. Um, and keep trying to at least get one ironclad out there that can sink some of their fleets. Even if we were able to sink one or two Union fleets, um, I feel like that would greatly, greatly improve our relations with them. And actually, I said we were going to Louisiana. I kind of lied, because Fort Pickens is outside of Mobile, Alabama. Uh, but Louisiana's over here to the west. We'll actually be going to Mobile first. Then, if things goes, go well, that's when we'll decide uh, to head into Louisiana. Union's really trying to break through over here, but so far at Manassas Junction, our boys are holding out and holding out strong. I'm more concerned about our men in the Shenandoah Valley. And so far, they're holding out just fine against the enemy. Wow! Such a small unit there in Springfield, Missouri, guys, and they have held out against four, five Union armies so far. Um, I mean, saving time like that could cost 
could cost them the war. It's not going to cost the Union the war, but it, it could definitely hurt their prospects of, of coming out on top. Now, this I'm really concerned about, and that is this bulge in Arkansas. We're trying to get there as quickly as we can with our units, but the problem is we have no rail um, facilities going there. Uh, it's just basically a dirt path, so that obviously complicates things. It looks like the Osage have also prepared for war, uh, but it also looks like the Union have sent some troops to New Mexico as well. Now, let's take a look after um, that situation in Kentucky. Let's see if they are more on our side. It does look like the enemy is starting to actually raise troops in Cairo, Illinois, which kind of lets us know what they're going for. Definitely a concern. Now, where's that bulge happening? West over there. Again, though, that rail yard is not going to even extend out there, so there's no point in putting a train there. We'll put the train here, and for our rangers, and I believe our rangers can only drop in San Antonio or Texas rangers, uh, and we are going to send these guys as soon as we can. It's going to have to wait. We're going to have to wait a turn, but we're going to send them into the New Mexico area uh, to, of course, assist with that. This guy, we are continuing over there to try to help our units at Gainesville. But it's, uh, it's going to be an interesting situation. In fact, I'm going to pull back just a bit. I'm going to do the same with this infantry. I'll try to fall back with this unit as well. And I'm going to put my focus on stopping the rebels uh, to the northeast of Arkansas there. Let's take a look at diplomacy. And see, Kentucky's getting even closer to drifting towards the Union there. So I don't know. I don't think we have the required diplomatic points um to bring them to our side we could certainly make them want to join our side but it doesn't look like it's going to happen by the way we might can we get our first army kill here in the shenandoah valley how per, how perfect would that be boys give a rebel yale because that's our first army destroyed at the mines of the shenandoah valley and we're even going to push and take those mines guys that is a really nice um really nice situation for us to say the least um and look at this we could even potentially move through with our cavalry cut off a bunch of their armies of course they would likely retake that area very quickly but i want you guys to give me your suggestions down below i think actually things are going pretty well for us here in virginia and uh maybe even better things could come from this we're also starting to move in over here in the West Virginia Gap, starting to spot these Union troops. And look at that. We're going to be surrounding that army. Hopefully, we could start pushing them back across the Ohio River. That would be the perfect situation. Well, guys, open to suggestions. What do we do about Kentucky? That's the biggest question right now. And consider that membership. A very special thanks to all of our existing members. You guys absolutely make the channel happen. Thank you so much, folks. Take care. I'll catch you on the next one.